and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be tackling the geode mold. Um, I have been very interested in rock art and collecting these guys for quite some time. Um, so I kind of got into this funk lately about making crazy abstract geo designs with all of my little collected rocks that I have been uh, gathering here and there. I've been lucky enough to work with Counterculture recently and they have sent me these beautiful molds. They have acrylic molds and wood molds. Um, they kind of start out looking like this. Ooh. And when you're done with them, Isn't that pretty? So um, hang tight with me. Let's go through the steps. This might look like a lot of work and a lot of detail, but it's a lot of fun. So let's dive in, let's get started, and let's have some fun. So what I have here is one of my favorite molds from Counterculture. They have these acrylics. They also have these wood cutouts. I think they're amazing. You can basically have your creative freedom with it and just your imagination can run wild. Let's get started. To get the most out of my stones and to get the most out of my color, I'm gonna start off with my Snow White Dispersion color from Counterculture and mix it in with my resin. And we're gonna drop it down on this wood and make sure that it's not porous, it's not gonna soak up. Um, I sometimes will do this with acrylic paints, sometimes I'll do it with inks. Right now, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do it with my dispersion color because I know that I want the epoxy to cure with the stones and I wanna be able to lay some stones right away. So let's get started with that. Just a few little drops in there, mix your epoxy real good and it's gonna give you a solid white. Make sure you turn it really good. We want a ratio of 10% white snow to your epoxy. We don't want this to turn into a marshmallow. So if you put too much of something in your epoxy, it might get a little finicky and it might get a little upset. So I like to keep it 10% to 90% epoxy. I'm not really gonna worry about the bubbles right now because it's gonna be such a thin layer that I can come back with some alcohol or I can come back with my torch and I can remove those bubbles. But the reason we're doing this right here is because I know what I wanna do is create a pour for my base color, and I'm gonna lay my rocks down, and that's just gonna go ahead and cure with the rocks, and it's gonna cut out a few steps. I started off with about 30 mLs, and I realized that wasn't enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and make another 30 ml. So all together, we have 60 mLs, and mixing in my white snow, keep on pouring. Tilt your piece. Get your resin to flow in all the nooks and crannies. Get it all nice and covered. If you have to help it along, go ahead and use your popsicle stick. First, I'm gonna lay down my Majestic Mauve. This is a purple dispersion color. I do lots of pores with these kinds of colors. I like to mix them with my epoxy. Um, and my pink is my Easter morning. We're about to see what we're gonna do here. I want the mold to kind of have like a purple, pink, white quartz vibe and to allow the color to come through the crystals and the rocks that I'm about to put down. So let's watch the magic. So now here comes the pour. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hug the edges of my mold with my purple. So here we go. We're gonna put just a little bit of my Easter morning into my already mixed white and hug the edges of my purple with my Easter morning. Again, I am all about the experimentation. Nothing is very calculated here. I like to just go with it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, I know for next time, but you never know what you're gonna find. You never know what you're going to discover or stumble upon. Um, so that's kind of just, that's just my style. Anything extra, I kind of have these little backup molds that I just throw in there. And um, that way nothing is wasted because everybody knows epoxy is kind of expensive. So if there's anything left over, I just throw it in a side mold. Now here comes the fun part. I like to bring my heat gun out and try to manipulate the harsh lines in my resin pores. This kind of gives it a nice blended look. You can still see the boundaries between the colors. However, it's not so harsh and so blunt. And that's why it pops the bubbles. It gives you a nice blended look. And now we're ready for some stones. 
This is the fun part where you get to decide what you want your geo to look like. Do you want it to be more of a stone effect? Do you want it to be a shimmer? Do you want it to be a sparkle? Do you want it to be more muted, crystalled, quartzy? The possibilities are endless. You can go in so many different ways with this. I want to go ahead and just throw some big stones right in the middle. And then I'm going to dazzle a few crushed glass some little mirrored glass pieces around the side and give some more weight to one side than the other. But I'm a stony kind of person. I like lots of stones, I like sparkles, and I am a sucker for collecting these things. Every time I go to the dollar store, every time I go to Walmart or the craft store, I always check out the stones that they carry. You can find them in their silk plant section. You can find them wherever they have the vase fillers. I like to go and see all the different kinds that they carry. Sometimes you get those shimmery rocks or the gold painted rocks. This what I'm using right here is just crushed mirror glass and I love it because when the light hits it and it reflects, it really makes it sparkle and pop. I'm done laying these rocks. I'm gonna come back tomorrow after this is already cured and I'm gonna play with it some more. Right now I'm kinda of happy with the way it looks so I'm gonna leave it alone kind of give myself some time to think where I want to go with this next um, and come back with new ideas tomorrow. So let's let this thing go to bed and I'll see you tomorrow in the morning. Okay, we're back. Our resin has cured and now we're ready to start laying the final details. I went ahead and I poured a clear layer of epoxy just to give me some tack on top because I know I want to drop some crystals right on the edge of this. Um, so I kind of skipped that part. Everybody knows how to turn epoxy and I just poured it right on top. And now I'm dropping my crushed glass. I like to hug the edges of my mold with crushed glass or rocks or something with texture that sparkles. Um, cause I feel like that's what geos really look like. They always have like these different layers of texture and quartz and, and crystal and, and just stone. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to just line the edge of my geode and see how this plays out. Again, every move that I'm making here is just very impromptu. I have no idea where I'm going with this. I'm just kind of feeling my gut here. And so far I like it. There is no right, there's no wrong. You just choose your colors and just have fun. This still isn't sparkling enough for me. So I think I'm gonna go and I'm gonna grab something to give it a little bit more pop because I like my geodes to sparkle. <laughs> they have to sparkle. The more sparkle, the better. This is the NMO silver glass glitter that I'll be carrying in my line here in the near future. I love this stuff. I put this stuff on so much, of so many geodes, but I just love the way this stuff sparkles. It's just, it is my favorite, favorite, favorite little last touch. It makes your sparkle just come to life. I, I can't, I can't get over it. It's just like twinkling little lights. I love it. All right, I think that's gonna be it for now. I'm gonna come back and I'm going to play with this some more. Not really sure where I wanna go with it just yet. I know that I don't wanna mess with it anymore right now. So I'm gonna let him cure and I will be back tomorrow to see where I wanna go with this with my new and fresh ideas. Here we go. Our resin is cured. I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to dress the edge of my mold. I know what you're thinking, what does that mean? <laughs> I always think of like the outside of a geode or the edge of a geode, like it's very rocky, it's very petrified, it's very rough. Um, and the inside of the geode is just beautiful. So to achieve this look, I'm going to use my epoxy sculpt and I saw this trick on Dryer Days. She has a YouTube video. It's so awesome. She does amazing pour art and amazing geodes. So if you have a chance, go check her out. I will link her in the description below. But I found that she uses this, this, this clay-like epoxy skull. And it's two parts. And what you do is you just mix it on up and you squish it together and you get it nice and mixed. And it kind of works like regular resin only this gives you a textured 3D effect. I know, mind blown. <laughs> so I'm here trying to struggle to get this guy measured out equally. I wanna make sure that I have equal parts because nobody likes a sticky piece. 
So let's go ahead, make sure we got it right, and let's start mushing it together. Wear your gloves because this stuff is really, really, really sticky and be patient. It, it's hard. It takes a long time to mix together. Um, <laughs> I like to just take a little bit, kind of roll it between my hands, fold it, roll it again, fold it until you have a nice even color. And then I break it off into little pieces and I decide where I'm going to stick it. There we go. We're starting to get a solid gray. You'll know your epoxy sculpt is mixed correctly when you have no cloudy areas. That's usually the indication that you haven't really fully mixed both pieces together, both parts together. Um, so now that I have a solid color, I think we're ready to rock. So here's the tedious part. I like to do this on the edges of my molds, especially the wooden pieces, because I like to paint the outside of it and I want to have texture and I want to have a non-porous surface to where the paint does not get soaked up to the wood. So I'm taking my epoxy sculpt, I'm making little worms, and I'm going to make a very rough texture, a visual texture on the outside, very edge of my mold. This stuff is very moldable, so um, it, it has a very good grace period. You can play around with it, you can um, just make peaks and you can make smooth parts, you can make indentations with it. Epoxy Sculpt is, has become my really good go-to tool when I want to have a more rigid visual texture or whenever I want to create boundaries. Um, I've seen people use this stuff when they make canvas art and they kind of want to have like 3D effects on their canvas or they want to just kind of keep the resin from merging together. So they put these little textured barriers within their art. And I have found that I like to use it on the outside edge of my geode molds. When this is nice and cured, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use my foil paint. I use the testers foil paint and it works really, really well. It likes to grab on to this texture and it gives it a very natural, rigid, very non smooth surface. Um, and it looks really cool. You'll see. All right, we've come to the end. It looks like I have a little bit left over. I've already molted it together, so there's no going back now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a barrier here on my voided area and um, just kind of go with it and see where where this whole thing goes, where it takes us. It's going to give it like a 3D effect, yet still make a barrier. So let's put it down and let's see what we got. Once you're done, walk away, let it cure, and then when we come back, we can paint it, we can pour on it, we can create barriers with it. We'll see what we're gonna do tomorrow. Okay, we are back. Our epoxy sculpt has hardened. It is ready to get painted. And um, let's see, what are we gonna do? Um, I think I wanna do a kind of bluish, pale blue peek through here in the middle, just kind of give it like a vein that runs through, um, a little bit of a pop. I'm gonna grab this testers and um, I will link all the names of the colors and the materials down below um, in case you have any questions. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and let's paint this and um, see where we go from there. Testers is one of my favorite, favorite go-to paints. It's an enamel-based paint, so it has lots of vivid color very, very fast drying and um, a little bit goes a long way. You can find this in the model airplane, model car section of your Hobby Lobby or your Michaels craft store. Um, you can also buy it online. But I do find myself going to these paints a lot whenever I want to get a finished effect, whenever my acrylic is just not doing it for me. So that's what I do. All right, I stepped away for about an hour and I let this guy dry. Now I kind of want to give it a cloudy look. So I'm taking my Modern Masters Pearl and I'm going to dazzle the top of this guy because I don't want it to be a stark blue. I don't want it to be a, wow, that's a lot of blue. I just kind of want to be a little muted, but I also want it to play into the whole pearl quartzy effect. So we're going to just kind of smear some of this pearl on top and see where we go from here. This is an acrylic base paint, so it's going to take a little bit longer to cure. So let's be patient with it. Let's walk away from it. Maybe tomorrow we'll come back and we'll see where we go from there. All right, we're back. Now I'm going to paint the edge of my geode. 
I like the whole mirror effect that's going on here, the color scheme that we have, and I'm gonna keep it a silver base. I know, I usually always pick up the gold, but today I'm feeling silver. So um, let's get our testers out. I will link all the names in the description below. And let's fill in this whole voided area right here. Testers is a very good paint. It doesn't really soak into your wood. Um, so I think, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of just fill in all these voided areas and then carry it over the edge and make the outside of my geode a very chromey silver look. I know I'm gonna want to put something here on top of this edge right here, but I'm just not sure quite yet. I just know that I do want this silver chrome to be blended in with whatever it is I'm gonna put on there. I have no idea where I go with these geos. I just literally play it by ear. Okay, our testers is nice and dry. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drop my clear epoxy right on the top because I know I want to put some stones on here. And I use my epoxy um, not just for pouring, not just for coating. I also like to use it as a glue, as like a cement. It's going to grab whatever it is I put on top. It's going to cure, it's going to grab it, and it's not gonna let it go. So here we go. Let's take our time. We're gonna put little by little. We don't wanna pour it on there because we do not want it dripping off the sides because whatever drips off the sides is going to dry that way and you're gonna have a drip mark on the outside edge of your geode. So take your time. So I really wasn't feeling this blue. I thought it was too much blue still poking out. I wanted it to be a little bit more muted. So I'm gonna go ahead and mm, take my reserve epoxy drop some color in there and create more of a marbled effect. And as always, I grab my gun because I wanted to not have so many harsh edges and um, just see where we can go from here. All right, now that I think my epoxy has thickened up a little bit, it's more of a glue now, it's not so runny, it's not going to flood over the edges. I'm gonna take my stones and I'm going to dazzle the edge and cover in that whole valley right there. And I'm gonna just set them in and I'm gonna trust that the epoxy is going to glue itself to these stones and it is not gonna move. So take your time, dazzle the edges one at a time. All right, so now we've dazzled our edge. We filled in all the voids. I'm gonna take my gold glass glitter this is a coarser glass glitter, and I'm gonna drop this right in this little area right here. Kind of dress it on top of my 3D effect. I still have some blue popping through, but I really want to have that visual texture and I want it to be very metallic-y. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna do this right here. Still missing a little bit of details. I think I want to fill in the area between the middle and the 3D. All right, so here what I'm doing is I'm going to put some clear epoxy on top of my colorant right here. I want to be able to flow this color a little bit more. And what it's doing, if you can see, when I drop the clear epoxy right here on top of my color and my champagne color, it's starting to repel it's starting to have a blended effect and it's not so blunt. That's what I love about resin. You can have so many different manipulations for your patterns and I didn't like the way it was so blunt. I wanted it to have more of a flowed blended effect. So I just dropped some clear epoxy on there and naturally it was gonna repel. Gonna add some gold flakes. Just mixed it right into my epoxy and then I'm gonna drop it right here in the middle. I wanna make sure that I have lots of blended texture. All right guys, I think that's gonna do it. I'm happy with the way everything looks. I'm gonna let this baby sit here. I'm gonna pop some bubbles. I'm not gonna hit it too much because I don't want this to drip off the sides. I kinda like the way everything is looking right now. So let's go ahead, let's walk away from this and we'll come back tomorrow and we'll have a masterpiece. And here is the final look. I'm very happy with the way this looks. I love the whole silver chrome metallics along. I added a little bit of muted crystal here onto the sides. 
Um, but in all, I am really loving this whole color vibe that's going on. It's very shimmery. It catches the light perfectly. It's going to look really good in my studio. So I'm very happy with this. You can either put this on a coffee table as like a paperweight, like on top of your books. You can hang this on the wall. You can put this on a stand, a little art easel. You can put this in on a shelf. I mean, you can basically put this anywhere. This is really, really, really pretty. It catches the light. It gives lots of visual texture. Um, especially when you have like a monochromatic theme going on, you can, you can just put this anywhere. It's so beautiful. Um, I am going to catch y'all later. I encourage y'all to make y'all's own geos, visit CC DIY. I encourage you to go out there, get your hands dirty, have no rules. If you love this, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel to see more and y'all have a great day. I will be catching y'all later. Bye.